What's up and welcome back to Cryptographics and today the Pulse Chain Bridge for Testnet version 3 is officially live. So we're going to go over how you can take test Ethereum, again test only Ethereum and also test stable coins over from the test Ethereum network called Sepolia all the way over to Pulse Chain Testnet version 3 and then swap it for your favorite tokens, whatever that may be. We're also going to go over how to import tokens into the wallet and I'm going to make things as easy as possible today. So some of these pathways can be a little bit more difficult to navigate if you're doing this like completely from the ground up, figuring it out on your own. So we're going to bypass a lot of the moves and I'm just going to give you the actual contract addresses in this video, which will all which are all going to be in the description below. So we can try to make this as concise as possible. So Let's get started. So we're starting off at pulseramp.com. Again, all the links for everything are going to be in the description below. So we're going to be at pulseramp.com. And in order to get the Sepolia ETH in our wallet, because if we have never done this before, we're not going to have anything in our wallet. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go to a, another place in a second here. But first, we're going to connect our wallet and we're going to click MetaMask. And we are going to, if you're, if you're not like me and you already have, um, and you haven't connected to this before, you're actually going to end up already on the Sepolia network. So I'm going to switch back over in just a second here. So now that you're connected, there's two things you want to do. First thing is there's a link in the description again for this. It's called sepoliafaucet.com. You're going to come in here and you're going to copy your address. And you're going to paste it in this link. If it's not letting you paste it in the link, it's because, or in this bar here, it's because you have to log in and create an account. Now, what I recommend is not using your personal email because if Alchemy or anyone that gets a hold of your email wants to send you something that's phishing or anything like that, you just don't want to trust anyone in this environment at all. Make sure that you're giving a burner address in terms of email so that way it's not your personal one so that you're not opening potentially harmful emails. Uh, a quick note on that is if you want to get one of five of these emails. These are, and of course, shout out to K4K for providing this. There's 10 minute mail, there's temp mail, proton mail, gorilla mail, and email deck or email on deck. These are five different disposable or just burner um, email addresses. And so pick one of those that works best for you. And you can use that here. If you don't want to use email, if you don't want to go this route, there is an alternative, but what I will say as a caveat is that you can get an entire Sepolia ETH uh, per day. Now, it's not got a whole lot of value on the PulseX exchange, even on testnet. So keep that in mind. It's not the end of the world if you don't get it, but you will need some either to send Sepolia ETH or to send the test die over the network. Um, if you're going to send test die, you don't need a whole lot of ETH. So you don't need one. So if you don't really want to do your email anyways, maybe just ignore this and go to the second one, though this next step does take more time. So of course, I'm not a robot. Send me ETH and then boom, you can get one extra ETH sent to your wallet. And when you open your wallet up, it should show. Now I already have one in there. So in a few moments, it should show that another one's going to pop up and you're going to get that into your wallet. So let's go to the second place, which is the Sepolia faucet, which doesn't require an email address. You kind of have to mine it, which is interesting. I've never seen a faucet like this, but we're going to do the same thing as we previously did. And again, link is in the description for that secondary faucet. We're going to place our Ethereum address that we've copied from our MetaMask into here. Click I am human. And then once that's approved and we do our little capture here, let me just do this real quick. Then we're going to go ahead and, and click start mining. Now, what I recommend is to get up and walk away for a bit because this does take some time. It's going to take it be a little bit of a process. You can get up to two SIP ETH or just regular test ETH, but it's going to take some time to go through this process. As you can see, it's slow. Um, the hash rate, I guess, is slow for this test net mining um, through just like CPU or however it works on the, the test net. So get up, walk away for a bit if you don't want to do the, the other alchemy version and then come back in a little bit. And one more caveat is you want to make sure you have at least, um, if you're going to be sending ETH across the bridge or this test ETH, then you want to make sure that you're getting at least 0 0.02 ETH. Because if we go to, if we go to the pulse chain bridge and we grab our ETH here and I type in 0 0.01, it's going to say our minimum amount per transaction is 0 0.018. So you have to have at least basically 0 0.018 in order to send anything across the network. But if you're just going to use the ETH that you get 
from these faucets, you could literally take what's here as soon as it allows you to, because there's a minimum that you can claim. It has to wait till 0 0.01. So as soon as it gets to that, then you can click stop and claim. It's going to send it to your wallet and then you are good to go, but it will take a little bit more time. So again, that's the two ways so you have alchemy. If you want to use an email and get one ETH, it's a little bit quicker uh, in order to navigate this. And, or you can use the faucet without an email address and it takes a little bit longer, but it'll give you the amount of ETH that you need. Now, quick caveat on this whole video here, these initial steps that we're doing to set up um, both the test die and ETH is going to be far longer than the normal setup. So these steps here are just for testing. So remember, it's going to be a lot easier than this. There's going to be a lot less steps as you're already going to have these tokens in your wallet. You're not going to need to import them. You're not going to need to mint them. You're not going to need to do anything else. They're already in your wallet. So this is going to make things a lot quicker. So if testnet, if you can get a hold of this, then it's going to be far easier when mainnet goes live and it's going to be just a breeze. So remember that. Now let's go quickly to talk about test die and I'll show you how to import at the end of this, both wrapped ETH and test die on the PulseX exchange. But first, what we're gonna do is we are going to go to the test die link and we're gonna show, I'm gonna show you how to mint test die to then bridge over to the PulseX exchange and actually get yourself all set up to swap with other tokens. So again, link is in the description for this sepolia.etherscan.io uh, link. And what you're gonna wanna make sure is the reason why we connected initially to Sepolia on the bridge, the pulse, uh, pulseramp.com is because you need to be connected to the network to use this website and then mint or just basically create this test die token. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is when you're at this page, scroll down a little bit and you'll see this connect to web three uh, button here. You're gonna click that, click okay, and then click on MetaMask. And then once it says connected here, you can come down to tab number four, which says create and you could just paste your address in there. And when you do that, it's gonna come up with a little gas fee that you're gonna pay. And what this is essentially doing is you're paying a transaction fee to create this test die, okay? So this is gonna pop up in just a moment. And then we're gonna go and confirm. And you can see here how little the, the transaction fees are. So this is why I was saying, if you wanna do test die only, you're not really worried about bringing wrapped ETH over, then you don't really need a whole ETH to do this, but it is gonna be quicker to do it. So just understand that. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to confirm this transaction. And in a few moments, what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to look in our wallet and see that test die is there. Now, in order to import die into your wallet, you're going to take this address right here. You're going to go copy address. You're going to go into MetaMask. You're going to go to the bottom of your screen here, where it says import tokens on MetaMask. You're going to click or you're going to click in the top search bar and you're going to command V or paste it in. T die is going to come up. It says the 18 decimal points there, add custom token. It'll show your balance and you're going to click import tokens. Now for the bridge, because let's go with the idea that you would like to just do uh, T die. So test die only. You're not going to do ETH for this. What you would simply do, and you could do this for any token as well. It doesn't have to be just for T die when it comes to the bridge. Uh, for mainnet. So what you would do, and on a quick note on that is it should auto populate whatever is in your wallet. However, if it doesn't, this is the way you would do it. So you click on this little ETH or whatever the logo is of the token that's highlighted from ETH mainnet when that's live, or in this case, Sepolia testnet, you're going to click on that and you're going to go to add custom token. And you're going to simply paste that address in just like we did into MetaMask. Then you're going to click add token and it's going to show that now T die is added into your wallet or added into the bridge and boom, we've got 20,000 T die just sitting there waiting to go across. So now what we're going to do is we are going to take that die and we're going to move it across. So I'm going to type in 20 or you can also, you don't have to type in the amount. You can actually just go max. I'm going to just do 10,000 for this sake. And I'm going to bring that over. So it's very simple. You just press send, send, and MetaMask is gonna, of course, pop up. We pay a little bit of a gas fee. And as soon as we confirm this transaction fee, then it should just go through. And it does take a little bit of time uh, to go through. I believe it's a little bit quicker than the previous bridge for version two, uh, testnet version 2B, um, but it still takes some time. So confirm that. And then now we wait. 
Okay, and now that it's gone through, all we have to do is click Authorize Bridge to access the 10,000 uh, T-Die. We're gonna click that. And I'm gonna click on Max here. Now this, I've done a video on this previously. Normally you wanna put only the amount that you're willing to spend at a maximum. If you trust the protocol more, you can do a bigger number. But this is basically just saying it's allowing the contract to spend, or not spend, but allow you to spend the 10,000 TDI in this case that you have. So I'm gonna click next. And I'm gonna go down and approve the spending of that TDI. And just like that, we're complete. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. And then just like that, we're gonna see 9,990 TDI that are in the wallet there. So that's awesome. We're ready to rock. And now what we can do is we can go over to the PulseX exchange and we can input the tokens into our wallet. We can import them into PulseX. And first though, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to connect to the Pulse Chain network. So oftentimes if you try to click to switch over or you go to the PulseX exchange, it doesn't necessarily switch you over right away. I'm not exactly sure why that is, but you'll see here if I switch networks, it still stays on Sepolia. So the way I've found to do this is once you're at the bridge and you're done with Sepolia, just simply go into your wallet. And assuming you've been to Pulse Chain Testnet V3 one time, I will talk about if you haven't in just a moment on what to do, but go to the top of your MetaMask, click Sepolia Test Network and click Pulse Chain Testnet. Now that's gonna switch you over and then it's gonna automatically bring you over on the bridge as well. We're gonna ignore that for the time being because we're pretty much done here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into the PulseX exchange and we're gonna import both the wrapped ETH as well as the T die so that way you can see how to get them both into your wallet. Now, in order to find these, it was kind of a gong show, honestly. Um, it was difficult to find both the T die and the wrapped ETH proper contracts. I tried looking in the pools here for the contracts and nothing ever came up or not the proper tokens, I should say. And even these ones here that came up in the um, in the search list on the exchange, they didn't have the right contract code on Pulse Scan. So what I'm gonna do here, guys, is I'm going to put, there's going to be a, to a token address for both uh, TDI as well as for wrapped ETH, the proper two that are actually gonna let you look at your tokens and utilize the tokens in your wallet. Um, and I'll show you them here. Okay, so as you can see, I have the wrapped ETH and the DAI that were transferred over. Uh, and what I'm gonna do, again, like I said, is I'm gonna put both of these addresses, which you can verify on screen here for the one I have, the, the ETH one ends in 8802, and the, the other T die ends in 3224. And I'm gonna put both of these addresses in the description here so you can just copy and paste those directly in so you don't have to go searching around through your wallet or anything else on Block, Sco on block Explorer, um, or on the uh, Block Scout, I should say. So. Now that we know that, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you once they're in your wallet and once you have this address, how to import one of these tokens and or both of these tokens, I should say. So once you have the contract address copied, let's say for TDI, and it's in your wallet, again, to put it into your wallet, it's the same process as when we were over on Sepolia. So before we go there, let's real quick dial it back and let's make sure you understand how to import that into your wallet. So you're gonna go to import tokens at the very bottom of MetaMask and you're gonna click on token contract address, command V or paste, and you're gonna click add custom token as you see TDI come up or wrapped ETH, whichever one it is, and then it's gonna show you your token balance and click accept, and then you're gonna see the balance for both of them or for one of them in your wallet. Then you wanna go and do the one for the second, or you wanna go and import the second token, which would be either uh, wrapped ETH or TDI, depending on which one you didn't do. And we're gonna do the same process for importing that into the PulseX exchange. So again, links in the, in the description for the V3 testnet PulseX exchange. So what we're gonna do for this is we're gonna use the wrapped ETH token and we're gonna sh I'm gonna show you how to import that into the PulseX exchange. So you're gonna click on the Pulse logo here on the exchange interface. You're gonna go to the top address and you're going to paste in the address. Now when you do that, you're gonna see wrapped ETH shows up. We're gonna click import. At the bottom left, you wanna click this little check here that says, I understand that anyone can create a PRC, yada, 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 but we know that this is just test tokens and we know where this is coming from. So we're gonna click import after that. Now, when we do that, our balance is gonna show up and wrapped ETH is gonna be 
available to then swap for any other token on the network. You're going to have to enable, if you haven't done this before or haven't done any swaps, you're going to have to enable wrapped ETH as well as you're going to have to enable your TDI. So if you haven't already, you're going to want to also go and you don't have any test pulse in your wallet. You're going to want to go to the faucet for pulse chain, which is faucet.v3.testnet.pulsechain.com. And I'll put a link again in the description for that. You can drop your address here and then you can just press request and it will send you 10 test pulse to your wallet. So you can do transactions. You can add that to your swaps, whatever you want to do. Now, if you don't want to go through the alchemy uh, setup here for getting wrapped ETH, if you don't really want to go through this whole mock ERC 20 creating and minting tokens for yourself, for those of you who want to skip some of these steps and just get the addresses knowing that this isn't going to be the full process when mainnet comes out it is going to be a little bit more simpler because you're going to already have those token addresses in your wallet so it's not going to be going and getting all these different pieces and you do want to get a call going with me to get yourself all ready to rock with the pulse train bridge and make sure you know all the steps then you can go ahead and book a call and during that call either the 30 minute or the one hour calls i'll give you the addresses and I'll, i can even send you all the tokens that you need for your ability to go around and mess around on the test net so you don't have to go and sit there like I did, clicking the right button for TDI for two or 200 times for about 30 minutes to get a couple million TDI. So that option's on the table. If you're called to do that, I'm offering 36.9% off my one hour calls and 22.2% off the 30 minute calls. And the coupons for those are gonna be in the description below. But really, that's all I have for you guys in this video. I just wanted to make a semi-short video. I tried to consolidate this as much as possible. Um, just, I actually recorded this video once already. It took about 40 minutes because I was extra thorough and the audio did not record. So try to make this one a little bit more concise. Again, everything in this video, links wise, is in the description. And thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please smash like and subscribe for more. The text version of this video is going to be on my website with a link to that blog in the description as well. And again, I do coaching calls if you want help with this kind of stuff. You can also send me an email if you have questions. There's no sweat there. I'll always reply to you. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and we'll catch you very soon in another video, hopefully about liquidity providing and farming. Now that we have, as you can see, some prices here on the top of the uh, PulseX exchange and there's a couple different farms that are open. We're going to try that out in a future video and see what happens when you farm with some bigger amounts of liquidity over the next few days. So stay tuned and have a great rest of your weekend. Peace.